you know, it's been thought of that our brains do not regenerate. Our brain cells are not renewed, okay? This is uh, completely false information uh, because the brain cell can regenerate. In fact, it's the rate at which your brain cells regenerate that determines how your cognitive functions going to work or not work as you get older. So today we're gonna to talk about how to actually increase this regeneration of your nerve cells by a factor of 5X, okay? Now, yes, this research was done in animals and there's also a lot of research done in humans as well. So as I go through the list, I wanna cover a lot of different things that you can do to increase the size of your brain. And you don't have to do all of them. You just need to pick as many as you can do. And if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and add those to the comments of those things that you feel that you can add to your current lifestyle to increase the size of your brain, or at least the regeneration of your neurons. Because this list could be a little bit overwhelming to some people. You know, you can't do everything, but you just do what you can. Something is better than nothing. And the general term for a nerve regenerating is called neurogenesis. A lot of this research is done on a part of the brain called the hippocampus. The hippocampus, well, they don't know exactly, but it's involved in the relay of information that's connected to memory, learning, spatial navigation, remember layouts of certain things, problem solving, which you kind of need your memory for problem solving, reasoning, and something else called object in place memory. That's like remembering certain objects in certain environments, like where did I put my keys, etc. Now realize this, just because you don't remember where you put your keys uh, does not mean you have a problem with your brain. It could be that you just ate poorly the day before. It could be that your blood sugars are not quite correct. If your spouse, a family member, or your parent or whatever starts having memory problems, the worst thing you can do is to remind them of that and point that out because it's almost like the more that you remind someone like, you know, are you losing your memory? Uh, the more they start losing their memory. And even when I was in practice, I would notice this with um, married couples that would be coming in. Uh, sometimes the spouse would be correcting them if they, you know, said something wrong or pronounced something wrong or forgot something. And I pulled them to the side and I just said, you know what, if they do that again, just kind of ignore it. Okay. And I followed up with them and I found that the person stopped making these mistakes when the person stopped reminding them that they were making these mistakes. So I think what happens if you hyper-focus on something, it actually sometimes can make it worse. One thing that's really interesting about the brain, okay, is that if we take a look at the size of the brain and how much it weighs and we compare that to the rest of the body, it only really makes up like 2% of the whole body weight, yet it requires... 20% of the oxygen of the body, 20% of the metabolism of the body is given to the brain. So it's an energy hog. And this is why this first thing I'm going to tell you is so important. Out of all the things you can do to increase the size of the brain and prevent atrophy is regular, consistent exercise. And the type of exercise that would be best is aerobic exercise. And what I mean is getting a lot of oxygen. Now, this is not to say that other types of exercise is, is not also really good, but if you can also include long walks, for example, or some type of exercise where you can get a lot of oxygen, that would be even better than other types of exercise. But I personally like to mix it up. I do high intensity on certain days. I might do hiking or long walks on other days. That is the most important thing you can do to enhance your brain, regular exercise. On the opposite would be inactivity, right? Not exercising, being inside all day. That would not be good for your brain. The second most important thing for your brain would be fasting. Uh, and I'm gonna say just like intermittent fasting, but also periodic prolonged fasting. Very potent stimulator of certain factors that help grow your brain and repair the brain function. So you need to be doing two meals a day with maybe a fasting period of at least 16 to 17 to 18 hours, okay? That would be ideal. But if you can do longer, like a one meal a day and, and fast for 23 hours, that would be even better. And this would all depend on your lifestyle and also how much repair that you need to do on the brain because maybe you have some other issues. Like, But the point is that 
when you eat too frequently and have these snacks, which is just a killer for a lot of problems, the brain suffers the most, okay? So this idea that you have to constantly fuel the body or the brain is false information. It does very well when you don't eat so frequently and then periodic prolonged fast for like maybe 48 hours. The next thing, cold therapy, very potent stimulator of neurogenesis, which is the regrowing of your nerve cells. So that could be an ice bath, that could be in just a, taking a cold shower. Uh, some of you are not going to do this, but some of you will do it, but it definitely will stimulate the regeneration of the brain. Now, if you combine all three of these, you can look way back in time when we were always starving in the cold and we're constantly exercising to run and chase animals to eat them. Um, and so our DNA has been developed off that, has adapted off those three things to survive better because we needed our brains sharp. So if you're out in the cold and you're exercising and you're not eating, um, you can really support your brain versus always being in a very comfortable environment, being around food all the time, like having a refrigerator and just sitting back and being inactive. Other things you can do, omega-3, very, very uh, potent stimulator of growing your brain. That would be like cod liver oil. Why? Because a good portion of the brain is composed of something called DHA, which is a type of omega-3 fatty acid. Okay, so that would help you greatly. And it's very easy to do to have some fish oils or cod liver oil that you consume on a regular basis. Now, on the flip side of that, the other oil that's really bad for the brain uh, is oxidized oil, like in the oils that are heated, like vegetable oils. To create those oils, you have to heat them up with solvents like hexane, and then you use them in heat too, right? You actually use them to fry something or cook something or deep fry something. Very, very bad for your brain. Of course, um, recently we've substituted those for the saturated fats, being the coconut oil, the lard, the butter are actually very, very good to cook things in. They're very stable um, as long as you keep your carbs low. And so that relates to the next point, a low carb diet, because sugar and refined carbs and just eating a high carb diet creates a lot of oxidation to the brain. And the hallmark of neurodegeneration is glucose hypometabolism, where glucose is not being able to be metabolized in the neurons, okay? That's the hallmark uh, that occurs within the nerve cells, which means the destruction of the nerve cell occurs because it's not getting glucose fuel. So does that mean you need to eat more glucose? No, it means that you already ate too much glucose and you created insulin resistance. And now you basically create this resistance for glucose as well. And that's what destroys it. You basically starve off the nerve of energy. How can we use that information? We can lower the amount of glucose that you eat and we can feed your neurons a much better fuel, which is ketones. So ketones are the fuel that can bypass this damage of glucose and go right in and feed the neurons directly. So how do we do that? Well, we just lower our carbs and our bodies will naturally generate ketones. We can also take ketones as a supplement. We can fast and generate ketones, do fasting, intermittent fasting. We can also consume MCT oil because you're going to generate more ketones. Now I've mentioned cold therapy, but you also can do heat therapy, which like in a sauna or a hot shower, that can also be beneficial, but not as beneficial as the cold therapy. I'm sorry. Another thing that's really beneficial to the brain is vitamin B1, thiamine. And the opposite to that, a thiamine deficiency, which is very common, is the worst thing for the brain, okay? When someone does not have enough B1, you start developing this condition called wernicke korsakoff syndrome. It's a condition where you're very deficient in B1 and the neurons are degenerating, okay? So you have all sorts of problems in the brain. And this usually occurs because you're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates or too much sugar. And so when you don't have enough B1, you actually get inflammation in your brain. And B1 is uh, connected to so many positive things for our bodies, but especially for the brain and also to get rid of stress. All right, the next one is probiotics. 
which is interesting because there is a connection between your gut and your brain, right? I mean, the microbes in your gut make all sorts of the serotonin and other neurotransmitters and other factors. So if there's a problem in your gut, there's a problem up here. In fact, one of the side effects of taking an antibiotic is problems with your brain, mood, cognition, and even potentially certain types of dementia, which is interesting. So if you just support your gut, you actually can help this regeneration of your brain cells. So that would be consuming like uh, foods that have friendly microbes, probiotics, sauerkraut, fermented foods, certain vegetables that are grown on soils that have microbes. And also um, that fiber in the vegetables can actually feed the microbes. And if you have many different types of vegetables or different types of uh, lettuce leaves, that would be better because it's going to create a more diversified microbiome. But also there's another antibiotic or at least something that was patented as an antibiotic, and that is glyphosate. That's the chemical in the GMO. So that can actually alter our gut microbiome. Another reason why you should have organic type foods. Now, another thing that can actually support your brain is the sun. You're going to get a type of energy called infrared from the sun. Over 50% of the sun's rays is infrared and it can penetrate through your skull. Okay. And actually that can increase your melatonin, which can act as an antioxidant to support your brain. But that's interesting. And then also you have the vitamin D from the sun that can also help the brain versus being indoors to all sorts of artificial lights that do not help your brain at all. And then there's also plant-based phytonutrients that are really good for your brain. Uh, quercetin, turmeric, the phytonutrients in green tea. I mean, there's just so many different phytonutrients in so many plants that can help you. And then we also get foods high in choline, okay? Choline is kind of the raw material for acetylcholine, uh, a really common neurotransmitter in your brain. You need acetylcholine and that's made out of choline. So what foods are high in choline? Well, you have egg yolks, okay? You also have organ meats, fish, okay? So all of those are really important for your brain. And then we also have grass-fed animal products, right? Grass-fed versus grain-fed. Grass-fed are more anti-inflammatory because of the omega-6 to 3 ratios. You want those like one-to-one. -one. So that's just another point that you want to be aware of when you're consuming animal products. There is a big difference. And then we get to insufficient sleep. Not just the number of hours of sleep, but the quality of sleep that you get. Okay, it's very, very important. If you have insomnia and you're living on caffeine and stimulants, it's going to start to affect the uh, regeneration of nerve cells. Now, what about this topic of coffee? Well, too much caffeine can definitely create a problem with your brain. But if you have just a small amount of coffee, um, it's not going to be a problem, especially since there's polyphenols in the coffee that can support the brain. But excessive amounts of caffeine, if you drink too much, can override that and create a lot of problems. Because if you think about it, when you drink coffee, it does stimulate your cognitive function, right? So overstimulation of that can be damaging. Another really key nutrient for the brain, especially the hippocampus is zinc. Okay. Zinc is involved in different enzymes. If you're deficient in zinc, that can create an atrophy of the hippocampus and affect your cognitive function as well as your mood. Now, since I mentioned this topic of omega-3, like the DHA oils, which is so important in brain health, and it's a real easy thing to implement. I put some more information up with this video right here. You should check it out. 